I've figured out that you don't need a thousand elements to create something big. It's more of like highlighting those important things in the song. Everything has its own part and not, you know, crash with something else. When I started working on Remedy, I was in Greece, just, you know, traveling, touring. What I was thinking while I was uh, there in Greece and making the song is like, how great, you know, the summer is. You know, everyone is longing for the summer the whole year. And uh, towards the end of the summer, you, you're kind of sad. All these, like, great memories that you create on the summer is coming to an end. And so it's a very, like, melancholic feeling. You know, it's happy but sad. And I always strive, actually, for that in my songs. I think what really catches your attention with Remedy is uh, the piano melody in the beginning. I think what's important, especially when it comes to piano, it really is about what kind of melody you play on it combined with what kind of piano you've tweaked. So this is just, you know, we recorded it's, uh, different vocals me singing a little bit to the Jake, the demo singer, you know, you just stack them up, you know. That's when it becomes, you know, powerful. There's no, like, rock and science behind this. It's just, they're just singing along with the melody because, you know, that is the whole melody of the whole song. That's the lead melody. I usually like to add the drums and stuff more towards the end. The first thing, obviously, is the 4-4 four, four kick. I wanted it to be punch in it, but I didn't want it to take over the whole song. This is honestly the first time I just took a sample from, I think it was Vengeance or something, and just threw it in there. It was really exactly what I was looking for. What I always do is when I've tweaked the percussion or something and added plugins, I uh, I export it to an audio file, so there's not too many plugins on it while you know you start working because obviously the project's gonna get bigger and bigger. Some toms, and obviously there's more stuff happening in the um, in the drop. Uh, there's more toms, hi hats, and also when you layer them, they just become more powerful. And as you can. Here it's nothing crazy really. It's a rhythm you've heard many, many times before, but it also was the only rhythm that fit. What really helps the drop in the song is the diva and omnisphere combined like this. That's like the top melody in the piano roll, and it's the main melody in the vocals too. So they're all playing the same melodies. So with bassline, you can really create different kind of flows. On this one, uh, it's following uh, the chord progression, but uh, it's jumping out a little bit to just bounce a little bit more. So I'm going to play it with the kick, so you kind of hear how, where it jumps out. Logic came out with a really cool plugin called RetroSynth. The LFO there is not on time. When you have a 4-4, four, four, it's, it's, it's good sometimes to, to have things a little bit offbeat. So in the, in the chorus, it's the piano filter, the pads, one that's very dark, one that's a little bright and one that's very bright together with the gang vocal. It really gives that epic feeling, I think. A hands in the air moment, I think. What's interesting though is in the second chorus, I actually strip it down, just two elements. It's the filtered piano and the bright pads. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe 
that you are the remedy. When I work with vocals, I always somehow try to combine it with the demo vocals. In this case, there's just few parts where you can hear uh, Jake's vocals, one of the writers, that you know just plays along really well with uh, Connor's vocal. I'm just gonna first play Connor's. That you are the remedy. Now you're gonna hear it with Jake in it. And you're gonna notice how much wider and bigger it sounds. That you are the remedy. That you are the remedy. And obviously, through the songs, there are a couple of FX there, like um, uh, sweeps and crashes, and through more added layers, we got some horns in here. And once again, it's nothing crazy really happening in this song. I think the key to this song is the vocals and the melodies. The rest was pretty easy to make, as you can see. And it sounds something like this. As a producer, I always strive, you know, to find new sounds. In this case, I wanted to go the other direction because uh, I've always worked the other way. This time I wanted to put sounds in there that people recognize. It really creates that warmth, that, that comfortable, nice feeling. <laughs> 